Well, by the look of the weather today, you wouldn't believe that we were in the middle of July, but there we have it. Big dark brooding skies, intermittent rain showers, but here we are, English summer. I'm down here in the Stour Valley, lovely intimate old pit, somewhere that I haven't fished for a good 15 or so years. I'm 24 hours into my session now. I've had a couple of carp already, uh, we'll talk about those later. And this morning I've had this old character, lovely dark old male common. And uh, I'm here really to run you through my summer fishing, how I approach things. We'll get on with that a little bit later, but for now, I think we'll get this a lovely old boy back. He's great, isn't he? So as you can see, we've had a lovely break in the weather now. Sun's come out, feels a bit more summery, which is lovely. So I'll tell you a bit about the trip. Uh, I've been here 24 hours now. It all came about, I came for a walk round at the weekend. As I said before, I haven't set foot on this lake for the best part of 15 years, which is quite a long time, but it holds a lot of really good memories for me. Last time I fished it was the really hot summer of the mid 2000s. Scorched earth type summer, really good period of fishing. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a reminiscence trip really, but the lake was quiet and I thought I'd take the opportunity to get myself down here. As it happens, you know, 24 hours in, I've had uh, three carp now. I uh, had two yesterday morning, um, a lovely zip linear, which was the first bite of the morning. It's normally day bites down here, so which, which is good, typical of a really weedy, clear pit. The second bite, which came mid-morning, was a, a, one of the real special ones. A, an old warrior of a carp, went, goes by the name of Rasta. It's an ancient old Kent history fish, really. The proper old granddad of the pond. Um, I've made his acquaintance before, as I say, 15 odd years ago. Uh, and he's still going strong now. He must be the best part of 50 odd years old now. It was lovely to see him on the bank. This swim, the reason I chose it, a number of reasons really. The most obvious was this huge chunk of surface weed in the corner. Basically this whole bay, this whole bowl end of the lake, uh, you could see that it was just a forest of subterranean weed. And in the summer, that's, you know, it's a magnet for the carp. It was the, the perfect choice and the obvious place to, to make a start. So I trickled a bit of bait in, did the first night and, you know, it paid off with a couple of bites. Um, and I've had another one this morning, which we've just seen, like typical of the pond, really, a lovely, lean, dark old male common. Um, really are super cool fish and uh, it's just a lovely place to be. So yeah, um, I'm going to finish my coffee, watch the water for a while, probably, you know, midday, probably have a little wander around. We've had another change in wind direction. So, you know, it's going to be worth having a look down the other end of the pond, um, see if the fish have got down there. But for now, you know, I'm going to watch the water and uh, see if anything else happens. Just had another tench bite. That's number four this morning. So first light, I've had a carp. And then since then, I've had nothing but tench. Tench are showing over the spots. They're actively feeding. Now that's telling me something. All the time the carp were here in numbers, I wasn't getting any tench activity at all. Didn't get picked up by tench. And we've had a change of wind direction this morning. It's blowing down the other end of the lake. And I think the carp have gone with it. So hence the, the, the tench are plaguing me now. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reel the other rod in, 
Uh, gonna go down and have a, have a look at the other end of the pit, see if I can see any showing. And uh, it looks like a moves on the cards. So it's a, it's a brand new northerly. I think I've got to go and have a look just to scratch the itch, if you know what I mean. So let's go and do that. Well, I've got right down the other end of the pit, have a look on this fresh new wind. And unfortunately, I've been pipped to the post and someone's in the swim that I fancied. So as it's a very narrow end of the lake, I'm gonna leave him to it. I don't wanna encroach on his chances. So I'm gonna shoot back to my swim and have a little rethink. Summer is the time of year that I'll be using more bait than at any other time. The carp have generally spawned late spring, early summer, the water's warm, their metabolism's firing, they need a lot of food and as an angler that's the time to give it to them. I get through kilos and kilos on some sessions. You've only got to imagine a, a group of 20, 30 pounders come in, they demolish a bucket of bait in no time at all. And the best bit about it is it doesn't have to be expensive. I base my mix around a lot of seed and small particle, and then I add boily to that, whole boily and chopped and crumbed, just to bulk it out, a few handfuls of pellets, and it's done. The, the reason I use the crumb is it's a carrier for the liquids. I like to add a reasonable amount of liquid in the summer. Gives the, the mix that sort of real aura when it's on the bottom. It's giving off a, a, a beat almost, you know? Um, so, you know, realistically, it's a fairly reasonable mix that I can use in large quantities throughout the time of year that the carp are eating more than they will do at any other time. A nutritious mix that allows the carp to get back to where they should be weight wise. Packed full of small items and slightly larger items giving you that choice of hook bait. Keeping the carp in the swim for that little bit longer to allow you to get the bite. And also those small food items, you know, if you have bird life on the ponds, which we ha have on most lakes these days, it makes it so much harder for them to get through your, your baiting situation. You know, it, two kilos of this mix uh, will take the birds God knows how long, whereas two kilos of boilies, they can be done in a few hours and they're gone. So, you know, this is my summer mix, works for me, give it a go. It's not expensive, it's very effective. So after a good look around the lake this morning, I've actually decided to stay put in the swim that I've been in for the last two days. Didn't really see anything on my walkabout and uh, I've got an established spot here. You know, I've had three carp off this spot. Um, it's had a decent amount of bait going on it. What I'm doing now is actually topping that up. Early afternoon, I like to get all the disturbance out of the way in one go, hence putting the bait out maybe put the rod straight in, maybe leave them out for a little bit longer and just see if any fish turn up. But, you know, essentially get, the, get all the work done before any sort of bite time. Plus, obviously it's an incredibly weedy lake. There's no margin for error. I want to get my spots absolutely precise. And uh, that's why we do everything early. I don't want to be rushing at it. I love summer carp fishing. 
beautiful atmosphere, misty mornings, long, hot, sultry days, cool evenings, barbecues, beer, fish fizzing over your spots. They eat a lot in the summer, you know, they're infinitely catchable. I've caught some of my best fish in the summer months, some of my biggest fish. It's got its highs and its lows, you know, it's exhausting. Short nights, really long, hot days, and then you've got all the insects, you know, biting midges, mosquitoes. But we can overcome that, you know. It, it's such a good time to be out on the bank. Don't, don't miss out on these opportunities. Um, you know, the carp are, are catchable. They're a real summer fish. The lakes are beautiful, gin clear, weedy. Yeah, it's, it's such a great time of year to be out there. You know, you, you've really got to get out there and catch summer carp. It can be really hard work, but those rewards are there to be had. The swim I've been fishing over the course of this session is incredibly weedy and the spots are covered in all manner of debris. Under these situations, I'd normally fish a pop-up rig. In this instance, I'm fishing the multi-rig. It's a rig that I've had so much success on in the past, I've got a lot of faith in it. It's a simple, uncluttered type of rig with the least amount of metal work available so there's no swivels getting caught up in the debris and weed. It's efficient in its hooking mechanics and you're using very strong products. For these sort of situations, it's exactly what you need. And to tie the rig, it's a really simple process. So I'll start off by taking 12 inches of the cam stiff material and I'll strip the last three inches off exposing the inner braid. I'll then take six inches of 25 pound recoil, double it over to form a loop. I then fold that in half again creating the loop to the height that I want to fish the pop-up at. That could be an inch and a half up to three inches, depending on the spot and how you want the rig to present. I will then thread the uncoated section of the cam stiff material through the first loop of the recoil, forming seven turns whipping up the material and then four turns whipping back down the material. I will then exit that braid back through the loop the same way that I came in, which forms the basis of your Albright knot. I'll then moisten that and slowly tighten it down, pulling the both sections together and then teasing the knot down onto the loop to bed it in. Once this is done, I'll put a puller tool into the loop, hold the end section of the cam stiff material and pull everything down tight, leaving yourself a nice, neat, secure knot. This then forms the basis of your knot to put the putty on to balance your pop-up rig. I then thread a tungsten dropper onto the end of the cam stiff material, pull it down and I will then form an overhand figure of eight knot in the end of the cam stiff material which I use to loop onto my swivel on whatever lead material I've chosen to use, be it a lead clip or a heli system. I then thread on a centimetre or so of one mil silicon down to the putty and then the loop will be pushed through the eye of an outturned eye hook for summer fishing generally a size four or five and then I slide on a hook ring swivel which is used to mount the bait. The loop is then pulled over the bend of the hook and the point and pushed back to form the D section of the rig. I form the loop generally opposite the barb and I will then push my one mil silicon up just over the eye of the hook to hold everything in position. I'll then steam the rig so that the coated braid is straight and I'll form a slight curve in the hooking section to aid the rig mechanics. I then add a small section of floss to the hook ring swivel and mount my pop-up of choice, trimming it off and blobbing the end of the floss to secure the bait in position. Once I've balanced the rig to how I want it to present, I then use the loop that I formed at the other end of the coated braided material to go through a swivel on a heli leader and it's just a standard loop. Uh, I bring the boilie through the loop and bed everything down before steaming straight once again, ready to cast out.
Well, it's the end of another long old summer day. Start the day off at just gone four. It's now getting on for nine o'clock. Rods are out, everything's sweet. Got baited up earlier, as I said. And uh, yeah, what's in store for the night ahead? I think there's a good chance they might turn up. There's a bit, few other anglers turned up down the way there, so the pressure might push the fish back. But nevertheless, we're, we're waiting in hope. And we've had a nice barbecue this evening, steak, pork belly, and we're just about to have some nice strawberries. Had a nice evening with my mate Si. He's popped in to say hello, like you do on a nice summer evening, but it's, it's getting really humid now. Um, I think it's time to get that old mosquito mesh chucked over the brolly, stop the old biting critters getting older me. And, um, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens tonight. Hopefully I'll have some good news for you in the morning. It's a fresh one this morning. Those skies cleared last night. The temperatures dropped into single figures. Totally different morning to the last couple. Even the tench activities fizzled out. I haven't seen the carp this morning. Things have changed. But we've had a lovely time down here. You know, it's been a perfect summery English carp session. We've had 25 degrees and we've had big moody skies, blazing sun. We've had three lovely carp. And we've had a chance to reminisce on, you know, those days 15 odd years ago when I fished this lovely Stour Valley pit. So yeah, thanks to Mid Kent Fisheries for letting us come down on this, this venue. Um, I've had a great time, but I think it's time to wrap things up and I'm gonna see you in the autumn for the next part of the series. <laughs>